thank you, King of Glory, for another beautiful day you've given to us to live life, to enjoy your graces, to walk in your mercies. Lord, we worship and we adore you. Father, thank you. More so in your house this morning, in this holy assembly of God on earth, through this platform of technology. Father God, worshiping you. Receive our prayers. Receive our praise, O oh God. Thank you for your goodness to us. Even now, as we, as we sit at your feet, Lord Jesus Christ, to hear your word. Father, speak to us. Our, our hearts are open. Our ears are open, Father God, to receive and to hear your word. Thank you, King of Glory, that your word will do us good. We are expectant. We bless and we honor you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Good morning, Kingdom Gospel Church, and a very good morning to all of our friends all over the world who will be joining us on the service and indeed perhaps watching this recording of this teaching after the service. Amen. Via social media, Facebook or YouTube. However, you come into contact with this recording. Amen. This world through this recording, we bless God for your life. We pray that the world will enrich you, grant you wisdom, understanding, and that which you need to have a purpose-filled life, purpose-driven life, and to be successful in every endeavor that the Lord will have you do in Jesus' name. By the grace of Almighty God, I want to teach um, a word that the Lord gave to me a while back, a very while, a long while back. Amen. A very long while back. I'm saying years ago, but it sits today within the 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 the, the, the context of a word that God has given to us for this year. Indeed, in Kingdom Gospel, God has given us a word this year that this year is our year of of the breakthrough. Amen. Our year of the breakthrough. We're excited, we are happy, we bless God for such a word that has inspired us to look to him for a very fruitful and productive year, progressive year, year of progress, a year of constructive progress, a year where we will know indeed God has been so awesome and so good to us. So he's brought me back to this word, and the word is simply titled Defining Moments, moments that, 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 that listen, I'm excited defining moments moments that 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 will that we can see change for the better in our lives moments where we can identify god taking us higher amen you know doing something substantial something significant in our lives that's pushing us that will push us towards destiny in jesus name and so i want to bring us this word to, again to to encourage us that in this year 2021 what god where god has promised us as the year of the breakthrough to look out and watch out for, for those defining moments that can trigger the breakthrough for us in whatever area of life that God will want to do that significant thing for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and looking through scriptures, there are so many case studies, so many profiles we can look at. But I want us to begin this morning blessing God for his goodness by looking at the text that I'm going to be using this morning. First Kings chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. It's a very familiar text for those of us who are familiar with the Old Testament text. It's about this woman, uh, this widow in, in the area we call Zarephath. How the, the, the servant of God, the man of God, the prophet of God, Elijah went to her at a time where there was famine in the land, at a time where, where everybody was holding back what they have to be able to survive and to be able to, 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 to live in that, in that time when there was so much hunger and so much poverty and so much famine. Amen. It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, uh, read, and you will find that in this particular time where there was so much hunger and poverty, maybe, you know, maybe some sort of destitution in the land. God made a demand on this widow, and that demand, amen, the obedience to the instruction of God for this widow triggered a chain of events so that throughout this period, she did not lack food and drink. She did not suffer hunger. She had an abundance, not only for herself, Amen. But for her household, and I believe maybe even extending uh, some support and help to, to those people within her, her circle of friends and influence. Father, we bless you. Our God is the God of wonders, people of God. Amen. It's an awesome God. So in First Kings chapter 17, verse number 8, we begin to read. Amen. We join the narrative in verse 8 of First Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to, to him, that is Elijah saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. 
And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me, a, uh, bring me a little water in the cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So bring me water and bring me bread. Verse 12 says, so she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. And, and she was very truthful. Only a handful of flour in the bean and a little oil in the jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Wow. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. Defining moments. Amen. And as we as we look into the word and, and, and by the help of those will expand it, you will understand what the Lord is saying to us, particularly in this year, 2021, where the Lord has promised you and I and all of our friends, partners who are supporting us in this great commission, that this year is our year of the breakthrough. Well, there's going to be moments of opportunities, amen, in time that God is going to be giving to us that will trigger the breakthrough that he has promised us. In fact, Ecclesiastes chapter number nine, verse 11 reads, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding, but time, but, but nor favor to the men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Let me read one more time. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, Mm -hmm. Not the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. So God gives us time, 12 months in the year, the, 20, the 28 months of February, or the 31 days in, 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 in January, or the 30 days in maybe November, amen, or, 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 or June, or September, amen. Church of God. It is not. It, it 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 is not about your ability. It's not about your strength. It's not about your skill or your understanding. It is that God gives us time, and within time, He puts opportunities. Amen. Opportunities. Amen. And I'm and my prayer in Jesus' name is that as the year goes on and goes by this year of the breakthrough, that we will be able to recognize and see those opportunities that God has put in time for us, for us to have that significant breakthrough that he has promised us individually as families and as a church in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Let me say it this way. Nobody, nobody, nobody goes forward. Nobody makes progress. Nobody, there, there's always a point, a turning point, a pivotal point for the better. Not, not for backwardness or, or retrogression, but for progress. And I'm saying that God has put those points in time, those moments in time, amen, for us. And our, and our responsibility as God's people is to be able to, I believe God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to be able to recognize them when they come and so be able to maximize every opportunity that God gives to us in Jesus' name. And I'm excited because God is not only giving us a word about the year, but he's telling us to look out, what to look out for, that there are demands that will be, will be made on us. There will be instructions that will be given to us. Amen? And, and, and as we look in this, in this world, you will begin to understand that God will put us in certain situations, certain circumstances, and, and make a demand on us. And as we obey and as we respond in faith, I believe God for the breakthrough for you, your house, and us collectively as a church, and our, for our friends who are watching us through social media, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen? 
Like I said, people of God, our God is the God of wonders, a wonderful God. He does wonders, amen, without numbers. You know, amazing. There's no measure of, of his blessing, amen. And so God is able to take a nobody and turn him to a somebody. Testimonies abound throughout the Holy Scriptures of God, amen, of the Lord doing things like this. People, you know, Jabez prayed and God answered him and turned his situation around. There are many over through the Scriptures. But how does it happen? It happens because God gives us opportunities in time. Opportunities that can potentially change the course of somebody's life for the better, for good, for progress. Amen. I call these opportunities in time defining moments. Moments that, that God gives to us that, 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 that will change our lives for the better when we obey and follow his, his instructions particularly in a year like this, when God has said our year of the breakthrough. Amen? We will break through, I believe God, but there will be certain times in this year. I'm not sure what month, which week, which day of the week. Amen? And as we go through this, this, this sermon, you will begin to understand and, and prepare your spirit, prepare your heart that, that God can visit you at any day, at any time of the day, any week of the month, any month of the year. Amen? Even in the next few days before January is over, it could be later this evening, it, could, it wasn't yesterday, it wasn't last week, so it hasn't happened. It could be next week, amen. It could be in February, it could be March, it could be any day of the month, any day of the week. Let's be expectant, amen. So we, on, we I believe God that He will be going to be creating those opportunities and giving us those opportunities that will trigger, lead us to. The breakthrough he has promised us. So we must learn to look out for these divine moments. They are, they are moments in time, God moments, amen, where you make a contact, amen, and with, with, with somebody, somebody prepared to bring you your blessing, amen, prepared to open the door for you, prepared to, to give you the opportunity to come work in that office or, or to start a business, who will say yes to the application. Amen. I don't know what it is, but I, I, I do know and I do feel in my, my spirit that God has arranged, he has, he has arranged and, and in a way planted these moments, amen, throughout the year for us. And may you, may, may I, may all of us in, in Jesus name be able to recognize the moments when, when they come and be able to maximize these opportunities in Jesus name. So, so let's look at these two keywords. What does it mean? Defining moments. Amen. The word defining number one means to be, you know, it, 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 it's decisive. It's what, de well, you know what the meaning of de 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 defining moments is something that is de de decisive. Excuse me. Amen. Uh, something that, 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 uh, it, 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 uh, that, that's critically important. Amen. For example, when you say uh, uh, that man took a course in, in, in catering, that course was the defining turn in his life. Amen. He, 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 he took a, a particular training over a year or two years. And that training was the different, meaning the turning point in his life. A critically important. Amen. I mean, synonyms of the word defining will be words like characterize or construe or determine, illustrate, ascertain, assign, denote, expound, tag, lay it out. Amen. So you can really definitely say that is the moment. That is the point where things happen, where things turn for me. So what is, what is the meaning of moments? Let's try and define moments. And moments mean a, a brief period of time. For example, uh, um, the manager was silent for a moment before replying. So a manager was asked a question and then, he, you know, for a moment and he got silent and then before he, he answered. It's not a very long period, it's short and brief, okay? Moments are usually attached to uh, something of value or, or importance, as the other word. For example, when you say, okay, the issues were brought, uh, were, 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 were lit you, of lit, uh, for, uh, you would say, the issues that, that were of lit you moment to, to the, so, so matters that were not particularly important, in other words. So uh, anything of, of importance will be matters of the moment, okay? If you say lit you moment, issues of lit you moment, issues that matter for the moment, that is things that are important, okay? Synonyms will be things like short time, minute, second instance, split second, jiffy, the word we use, meaning brief, short, moments. But we are, we are, we are looking at the one 
where he says it's important, it's value, it brings value. So I'm discussing with you this morning on how to survive in, in, the, in, in the land during so and so challenge. It's an important topic. So for this moment, that is the word, that is the, the, the discussion. Something of for the moment, you know, not little moment. When you say it's, it's, it's our focus for the moment, it's, it's important for us to look at this. So, so when you put the two words together, defining a moment, really we are talking about the point at which the essential nature or character or, or what is important is revealed or can be identified. So essential, nature, character, amen, important is revealed or identified. So this defining moment. And usually when you're at that moment, you may not even know, amen. Maybe later when the moment is gone and you're now, and, and, and you follow the instruction and you're now maybe now have, you know, having the seeds, sorry, the proceeds, I beg your pardon, of, of obeying the instruction, you know, oh, that's the moment. Hallelujah. It, it also means number two, defining moments are moments that can make or break a man or a woman or a people. There are, there are divine opportunities, like we just said. So it's a moment with essential nature or character of a person or a group or, or the importance of something is revealed or identified. Amen. It is what is called a kairos moment in the Greek, meaning the right critical or opportune moment. It is not the same, it's not the same as chronos in the Greek, which means the chronology or the sequential order of time. In the Greek literature, uh, two words represent time. Amen? Uh, uh, kairos and chronos. So chronos refers to the sequential order of the time, like your timepiece, you know, your wristwatch, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, you know, five minutes past, six minutes past. That is, that is, that is a chronos chronology, sequential order of time. But Kairos is, the, is a moment in time where something critical, right, or opportunity happens. Amen. And I'm praying to God Almighty for all of us that when we come to this Kairos moment, we will be able to recognize it and be able to exploit it because many have missed it. They have missed it. Many, many people have missed it. I think there's a word out of Hebrews chapter 30, verse number two. It says, do not, do, do not forget to entertain strangers. By so doing, many have entertained angels. Amen. You know, it's in the Bible. I think it's Hebrews chapter 13, verse two. A moment where you have strangers in front of you. In fact, I will look at a case of the later where the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, you know, not knowing that it was Jesus the Christ they were talking with. Amen. It was an opportunity. It was an opportunity, a defining moment, and then they saw him, and then they invited him home. He sat in front of them on the on the, on the dinner table, and then when he broke the bread, their eyes were opened. Hallelujah. These are defining moments, moments that God gives to us. Amen. And that revelation, nobody else got it, but these two these two people on the road to Emmaus, and then in, in their house as well, as they sat at dinner to break bread with the Lord. So there are moments in time that God will give to us, moments that may bring instructions, as we, as we see just now, which if we obey, will be the, the turning point, the pivotal point where the breakthrough comes in Jesus' name. I'm excited, amen, because God is a God who speaks and it comes to pass. He gave me this word many years ago, I'm telling you. And then in 2021, it tells us it's our year of the breakthrough and reminds me of defining moments. That if you are going to have, if I'm going to have, if we are going to have the year of the breakthrough, then watch out for those God, how am I? God ordained divine moments that will define your year and maybe define your life going forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A moment you can, yes, that week, that day, that month, something happened. Amen. That defined my story or redefined my journey. I was heading that way. But when I encountered God in this particular way, particular place, this particular day, that, that hour, oh, my life took a turn for the better. He redirected my thinking, my mind, my actions, my attitude, my character, my business, my career, my job. Amen. 
I, I pray that we all catch it as the Lord is sharing, sharing, sharing with us this morning by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, it's interesting to know that God doesn't just speak and then he sits back. He not only speaks, but he gives us aids and support so that his word will not fail. As we believe and act on the word, it shall come to pass in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So from our text, let me go back to, to um, 1 Kings chapter number 17 now. Amen. The word of the Lord came to him, to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Amen. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Father, I thank you that you are the God who sees ahead. You are the God who plans ahead. You are the God who prepares ahead. You are the God who, 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 who arranges things ahead for your people. Amen. And let me tell somebody this morning, by reason of the anointing of God upon my life, that even in the middle of this pandemic, as we are facing all kinds of economic challenges, Amen. God, who knows tomorrow, has already prepared your tomorrow, has already gone ahead of you and, and, and arranged help for you for tomorrow, arranged all everything that you need for tomorrow. Listen, uh, we haven't got the time to read the entire chapter. We are in the middle of a famine in Israel because God, through the prophet Elijah, said there will be no rain in the land. For three years and six months, no rain. Amen. Elijah the Tishban made his pronouncement to Ahab the king, a wicked evil king, and then walked out, went into hiding. God told him to sit, to stay at the brook. Amen. Now the brook is dried up. So God comes and says to him, Arise. There was famine in the land. And I think it's, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be fair to say we have something similar to famine because many people right now are suffering loss of income, loss of earnings. There's hunger across the land. For a lot of people. But in this, same, in this same situation, God speaks because God has already prepared for his people, for his servant, the prophet of God. And I'm saying to somebody this morning to please don't lose sleep. Don't go and develop high blood pressure because you're God. I say, child of God, God knows your tomorrow. He has already prepared for you like you did the light. He said, go, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. The location, where to be. I have commanded a widow there to feed you. And I want to pray in Jesus that every man, woman, every, every office, every agency, every family, family that God has prepared to feed you, to provide for you, they shall rise up and feed you. They shall rise up and clothe you. They shall rise up and help you. They shall rise up and support you. They shall rise up and not deny you the help that God has ordained for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is it that God has said will support you at this time? I command that person by the power of God, by the Holy Ghost, to rise up and give you the support that God has ordained for you in Jesus' name. You read it again, people of God. I have commanded. See, the problem is we cannot see God providing for us. And so we doubt the God's ability. We doubt his, 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 his wisdom and his strength to, to be able to provide for us. So we are trying to add one plus two, three plus four, to try and make it ourselves. No, 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 no. The God who has saved you has saved you from everything, including famine and hunger and poverty. Because your salvation is everything. Hallelujah. See. Church, do we see God seeing us through this pandemic? Do we see God putting food on our table? Do we see God? Yes, the office may have closed. Yes, we may be getting some income support or whatever welfare we are getting from the government. Do we see God? I hope you see God. He says, said to the prophet, see, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Who has God commanded to provide for you in the face of this pandemic? Who has God commanded to help you? I am asking them in Jesus' name right now that they will show up in your life to bring you all the support, all the help, your bread and your water that God has ordered for them to give to you at the appointed time in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And I also pray that nobody will deny you the help that God has ordained for you in Jesus' name. God commanded a widow. Listen, a widow, not the most <laughs> affluent woman in the land, not the richest family in the land. Amen. Excuse me. God has commanded somebody to feed you. Who? A widow. Expect help, people of God. 
from unusual places and unusual sources. Our challenges and our problems, we tend to look, yes, the help is going to come from those people or that part of the town, that family. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, God knows who to bless you. And who will not come back and, and, and laugh at you that if not for them, you would not have survived. God will take you through a situation and use people that knows we give him the glory. Not those who can look back and say to you, if not for us, amen, for no flesh, what shall glory, amen. God will not share his glory with anybody. Hallelujah. Help from unusual places. A widow. There were, I'm sure there were rich people in the land. Oh, you know, okay, there were um, uh, middle class people. But no, no, no. He sends his prophet to a widow. Expect help. So, people of God, it may not well be that which you are planning and, and the area you are looking, the direction you are looking, where your breakthrough is going to come from. God will bring the breakthrough. Amen. Look at it. A widow. We didn't have much. Amen. But the much in the hands of God becomes many. Like that little boy. Amen. Hallelujah. Who gave Jesus his five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. And with that little boy's lunch, just enough for one boy, Jesus broke it. Sorry, he, 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 ble he, looked, he put it to us to heaven. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. And with that, they fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, and had 12 baskets left of fragments. That is the God we serve from the lunch, amen, <laughs> the lunch box of a little boy. Church, help from unusual places. Not the place you think, oh, yes, okay, we can take an overdraft, take a loan to see us. To, mm, listen, God, <laughs> help from unusual places. Yes, I know we can use the overdraft. We can use the bank loan for all sorts of things. So, yes, but what I'm saying, the thing that God has promised to do for you, it is not just for this, it is for life. Amen. How many of us can live on loans for life? Overdraft for life. Church of God, I'm saying to you, even the money is not enough. You need more. You are going to live longer. I believe God. It is not the bank balance right now. There's more life, more, more days to live ahead, more years to live. And so we need God to, to help us. Amen. Help through unusual sources was a widow. And then Elijah called her and said, please bring me a little cup in the water that I may drink. And she, and as she was going to go and get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in, in your hand. Remember, it's water and then bread. Father, we thank you. God will bless you. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. But I do have the ingredient to make bread. Amen. Oh, I have some flour and some oil in the jar. And see, I, I'm just gathering the stick now to go and make fire that I may go in, prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and, and die. Amen. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But, but first of all, make me, make me, make me, hello church, make me a small cake from it, from what you have, and bring it to me. And afterward, and make for yourself and, and for your son. Make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, of, of God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the, the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. But, but I say to somebody, your, your bean may be used up of flour. The oil will run dry if you do not put God first. Amen. Oh, no, 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 no. Hear, hear, hear the word of the Lord, people of God. It is not about our, our com computations or permutations. It is not about our planning. L listen, we need to put God first. That your God and my God is bigger than anything that can come from this pandemic, than anything that the enemy can throw at us. When we not learn to honor God in the face of adverse conditions, then God will come true for us. Uh, the bean, the flower of bean would last for just one meal. But can you please 
honor God with that one meal. Can can listen? Remember Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Believe the Lord your God, and you what establish. But when you believe His servants, the prophets, then you will prosper. Oh my goodness, church! When the man of God showed up. That's God showing up, bringing you a word that will carry you to the, but the word has an instruction. And I'm saying to somebody and to all of us, friends on, watching us on social media, that God will make, make demands on us. There will be instructions when we obey, not if we, it's not conditional. When we obey, then we see the divine providence, divine provision, the hand of God. The bean or flower can be used up. I mean, and the, the job uh, can, 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 can run dry when we focus on ourselves because that is your ability. Because what does she have? I have enough for one meal for my son and myself. I know it's limited. Well, God can take the limited and make it unlimited when we put God first in the equation. So in this year, where God has promised us of the breakthrough, if we are going to have a defining moment, if, when the defining moments come, there's going to be maybe a challenge thrown at you by God, maybe an instruction to obey, to do something for God. When we know this is God and put him first, amen, I pray you know, I pray that I know, amen, walking by faith, honoring God. That is how we come into a divine moment. And so she had her defining moment. A divine moment, in other words, yes. Where what was supposed to be for one meal? <laughs> Hallelujah. What was supposed to be for just the one meal? The one meal for my son and I, and then we go. Became the very source for, for the man of God, for she and her whole household for many days throughout the farming, throughout the rest of the farming, should I say, until the farming was over. Who said, amen, our God cannot do the impossible. Church, this woman on this day, remember she came out of her house gathering sticks, uh, gathering some sticks to go and make a last meal, amen. And then here comes this man of God who says to her, what are you doing? Please bring me some water. Where is she willingly, you know, going to bring the water? Also bring me some bread, a morsel of bread. Now I'm not sure how big a morsel it was. What she was too far, I don't have it. I've only got some flour and some, uh, in the bean and some oil in the jar. So I'm gonna go and make, make, make into a meal for myself and my son. So we don't have enough to go. Okay, you don't have enough. What do you have? That's what you have, okay, good. Make some for me first. Okay, and then go and make for your, your, your son and yourself. For thus says the Lord, amen, in this year, 2021, our year of the breakthrough, if we will put God first, amen, so feed me first, because I have a word from God. If you feed me, amen, if you do this for me, then what you have will carry you throughout Amen. This period where there's hunger and lack and poverty, maybe destitution in the land. Church, God is not difficult to please. All God is asking for us is obedience to his instruction. I don't know. I do not know what kind of instruction God is going to bring to you, to you, to your way. So do this or do that or go here or go there. I'm not sure what it is. But I do know that God has defining moments for us. And with each moment, I believe, this is me preaching now, amen, I believe that there will be instruction to do something, which means to put God first. This widow, amen, put God first. You have a word from God that in this year, there's a breakthrough. And it's giving us an extra edge to this world by saying there will be defining moments. And we looked at this woman's testimony. This, let me call it a case study. Amen. Where God is making a demand. Where God is making a demand on her. For, from what she thought was very, very limited. Church, what you call little. Amen. 
oh, look at the pandemic in front of us. We are not sure. There's so there's closure. There's even rumor that the shops will run out of food by maybe April, May. We don't know. The schools won't reopen until you. Let's hold tight. Let's listen. As a child of God or a family unit that knows Christ, I am saying to us, we must totally trust God. Totally, because it is not our limited understanding of the times, but God, <laughs> hallelujah, infinite wisdom, who knows not only today, he knows about yesterday, amen, and, and tomorrow, I have, yes, you've been through yesterday, but today, you don't even know what's going to happen in six hours later from this moment, but God knows, not only for today, tomorrow, the day after, the next week, the next week, the next month, and 2022, and going forward. Church, I, I want to submit to, to, to us that in this year, 2021, if we've never done it before, let's learn to totally trust our God with everything that we have. Amen. Talk is cheap. Let's not just talk the talk, but let's do the talk. Let's walk the talk. I trust God. I love God. I, I obey God. I am saying to us, people of God, in this year, for you and I, for us not to miss our, our, our breakthrough that he's promised us, this breakthrough, amen, this awesome breakthrough, a significant turning point in our lives. There will be, there will be moments that will come where God will throw some instruction at you through his prophet. Maybe me, maybe some other minister, amen, for those who are not watching with us in Kingdom Gospel Church. But I trust God that those who are watching with us will stay with us. And as we, so we teach and we preach, bring in the word of the prophetic word of God every, every Sunday, Wednesday, and every opportunity that we do so, that you will hear God's clear instruction on what to do so that your bean of flour and your jar of oil will not be used up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for those of us who are wondering about how we're going to survive and how we're going to, listen, God will work with what you have. And this widow had, she didn't have bread. She told, I don't have bread, but I do have some ingredients. What ingredients do you have? What skill do you have? What ability do you have? Amen. What talent have you got? In the face of this economic challenge all over the world, globally, so to say, amen, where none of us is immune to these harsh conditions that has come with COVID-19. God will work with what you have. As small as it is, as little as it is, to you it may not be big. This is going to be for one day, one week. How much have we got in the bank? What's our balance? Maybe take us for one month. We pay the mortgage, or pay the rent, we pay the shopping. What else? Listen, what I'm saying is, if you put God first in whatever little you have, God will make your little to become mighty, awesome, in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Oh, as long as the Lord the Lord lives, he, she said, I, I do not have bread. And true, but I do have only a handful of flour in the bin and a jar of oil. That is what God needs. I mean, Gideon, for example, gathered an army of 32,000 men, soldiers, 32,000. And to him, with this many, many number of men are going to war and win. No, no, no. God took them through tests. <laughs> After a couple of tests, he was left with 300 soldiers from 32,000. So he lost 31,700. Only 300. Now the little 300 went to war. They didn't even fight. They went to bring in the spoil. Because God gave them victory. God did the battle. Only God confused the camp of the enemy with a noise. Make a shout, blow the trumpet, and smash the pictures. Amen. And the enemy fled. They only went to gather. And that is how God gets, excuse me, gets glory. When, not your might, not what you have gathered. When you are down to your ends with, when you have barely enough for one meal or two meals. And when you put God first and honor him with the little you have, your little become mighty. It become many. It become huge. It become awesome. And that is the miracle. That is the God who does the impossible for us. So the small handful of flour in the bin, the small, the small oil in the, in the jar was not used up, but was able to feed the, 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 the man of God, the woman and her household for the entire 
remaining days, weeks, maybe years of the famine. And God wants to do that same awesome miracle in your life, in my life. But it's going to come in a defining moment where he sends us some instruction. Will you obey God? Will you obey God? Will we obey God? I mean, the tendency in the, in the flesh is to say, look at, we don't know when businesses will go back to normal. Jobs, you know, people are being made redundant. Shops are, brand names are being, are closing down the high streets and, and, and in shopping malls. And it's to try and hold and, 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 and <laughs> but when you are serving the God, a man who owns the whole earth and the fullness and those who dwell in it, the cattle upon the thousand, he belongs to him. The silver and gold belongs to him. Amen. When he sends you an instruction, even the, in the face of these of these challenges, we must be quick to be. Perhaps, maybe, that is your defining moment. Maybe that's the divine moment that God is giving to you. That when you say yes and obey God, the heavens open. Amen. The help that He has arranged for you, the support that He has planted in time for you, will begin to knock on your door. They brought you the blessings. They brought you the favor, the new job, in the promotion, the, the income. You didn't know what's coming. The blessing from somewhere you didn't know was, was there. Remember, there's an ordinary day. She was going about her business. And so divine moments will happen on a day where you don't even, you just you are going about. In fact, I believe perhaps this was perhaps a very, a very, a very bad day for her, where she knew she didn't have much to live on. Amen. She wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been a happy day. I don't think so. Because she's gathering sticks to go and cook a last meal for herself and her, and her son to die, to eat and die. So it wouldn't have been one of those days where you are pumped up, you are full of courage and determination. You are shouting, hallelujah. Yeah, she's looking at, well, we are, we are dead at the end of the day. You know, there's nothing to live for. There's no hope. Amen. But it was not on that day. <laughs> not when she was singing and beating drums and, and dancing and, 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 you know, no, no, no. It was a day of, I, I, I believe she probably had a long face, looking discouraged, looking tired, giving up on life. Let me eat and die. Me and my son eat and die. But on that day, God comes true. What am I saying? Church, God knows where you are at. Amen. God knows where you are at. The kind of day, the, the time when you come, you would have thought that on this day, the angels of God will fly out of heaven and bring supply. Or people will come and bring. No, no, no. On this day, when she's about to eat her last meal and die, God makes a demand. Amen. Oh, she didn't know that she was walking her divine moment, her defining moment. She didn't know she was walking this opportunity for her to have, to have food and drink. Amen. She would have reacted and said, I don't have enough. Please go away. Leave me. Where is God? She could have complained, but she was willing. Are you willing? Am I willing? Are we willing? Yes, I know it may not be a good time for you, for us, in view of the challenges. But if we are going to have the year of the breakthrough, I believe there's going to be defining moments that we usher in and trigger the breakthrough. And I believe from what we are reading and hearing from the Holy Spirit this morning, Church of God, and friends all over the world watching us on social media. Amen. God will ask you, make a demand on you. Amen. It's how you respond. How I respond and how we respond will determine whether we have a defining moment that will trigger the, that significant turning point, the breakthrough in our lives. And I pray that when these moments come, that you and I will be able to recognize them appreciate them, amen, and maximize them in the name of the Lord Jesus. As I prepare to close the church of God, amen, we'll continue next Sunday. I haven't finished it, amen. This is what we call the Kairos moment. A moment that is right, that brings us the opportunity that we need. I could go through scripture. There are so many case studies. Abraham in Genesis chapter number 18, entertain God. We'll look at them next week. And Moses in Exodus 3 saw the fire I mean, the bush, but the bush was not being consumed. It was a defining moment. The woman at Jacob's well in John chapter 4, it was a defining moment for her. Amen. Peter giving his boat to Jesus to preach in Luke 5, it was a defining moment. Blind Bartimaeus in the junction begging for, 
when he heard about Jesus, he began to scream, top of his voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy, was a defining moment. What about the two disciples, the two, sorry, the two disciples we already talked about in the road to Emmaus? It was a defining moment. What about the thief on the cross? A lifetime of murder and thievery. Just a brief moment with the Lord, recognizing him and appreciating him. Lord, if you come into your kingdom, remember me. That day he made paradise. What about Joseph before Pharaoh? So many case studies. And by the grace of God, next Sunday, we'll come back to look at this word and to conclude it. There's so many things that the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. Amen. I pray that as we come back to it, we will begin to unpack them one by one. But the key word, the key message, people of God, is that your God has a defining moment. And let me be bold to say, defining moments for us. Not only 2021, but moving forward into 2022 and beyond. Will you recognize it when they come? But the situation may be so that it is not a rosy time. It's not a, a very comfortable time. Uncomfortable. But God will make a demand. Again, remember this woman. It was a demand made on her on a day when she was gathering sticks to go and make her last meal. On a God Almighty, not when the bin of flour was full up or you had a big vase of, of oil or drums of oil when she was down to the last bit of flour and the last bit of oil. And God says, give me some. Amen. Give me some. Feed my, my prophet because I have a promise. When you do this, then the bean of flour, as little as it is, then the oil, as small as it is, shall not be used up. And I pray, people of God, that will be our testimony and our portion in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. That we will put God first, his agenda, his will. After all, we pray, don't we? Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray his will to be done. What I'm saying to us people of God is that not just pray, let's not do the instruction that his will will, be, will, will come on earth, be done on earth in Jesus' name. And so God will send us the prophetic instruction, maybe through me as your pastor locally here in KGC, or maybe through, through the man of God, woman of God, wherever our friends are worshiping anywhere in the world. Amen. And as we follow the instruction, we'll begin to see the divine provision, the divine providence, the magnanimity, the mighty hand of God. Do awesome things that we thought couldn't happen. Father, we thank you. This word is for you to encourage you that the God who has promised you a year of the breakthrough is saying to you that there will be moments in this year for you to, for you to trigger and come into your, your, your breakthrough by a divine moment, by a divine moment. May you, I pray, may you and I, all of us in Jesus' name, all of our friends watching us, you know, on social media, may, may we recognize and, and, and be able to appreciate and maximize, amen, these moments and exploit them properly to every bit of blessing that God has put in any nook and corner. May we receive them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. The Lord bless and the Lord keep you. It's been good sharing this word with you. We'll continue by God to finish next Sunday in Jesus' name. Until then, hey, stay in faith. Amen. Please follow the guidelines. You know, whatever nation or country that you are, keep safe. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.